Meet Illidian, a new divergent, non-binary online creator who uses text-to-speech to create their videos. Text-to-speech, you say? There is no way a computer-generated voice could possibly have any emotional impact on people, right? A lot of the time, I feel like I'm stuck in a crowd that keeps rushing forward. Everybody around me is pushing forward and reaching to the next thing, and if I don't do it too, I'll fall down and get trampled by the crowd. So I push forward too and do things like worry about my career. Whoa, that was actually kinda good. I haven't come across a YouTuber I relate to so strongly in years. I have binge watched all their videos and some even multiple times. Alilian's videos affected me like none other and I'm not the only one who's been touched like this. This isn't just content, this is art. My co-workers usually pass the time by talking to each other. They talk about their careers and their kids and other stuff like that. I keep quiet because joining one of those conversations feels like trying to jump onto a moving train. I can do it, it's just really hard. Let's address the elephant in the room first. Why is A. Lillian using a computer generated voice instead of their own? Are they unable to speak? Do they want to hide their true identity? The answer is actually a lot more down to earth. Basically, talking throughout the day is so exhausting to them that Whenever they get home ready to relax and game with some friends, they'd rather let someone, or in this case something, else do the talking. A normal person's speech goes, I want to say something, and they say it. My speech goes, I want to say something, and then I have to stop to consider. What's the position of my larynx? What kind of vocabulary or terminology do I want to use? Do I want to try to use sarcasm or other rhetorical flourishes? Am I making enough eye contact? Am I making too much eye contact? Do I sound too much like a girl? Do I sound too much like a guy? Is this an appropriate context for swearing? Is there any unintentional subtext to what I'm saying? How's my cadence? Is my intonation flat? Does my body language make sense? Am I breathing at appropriate times? Are they getting bored? Initially, A. Lillian was having fun just creating videos which were only seen by their closest friends. But one day, they published a video in which they explained why they don't use their own voice. And that video went viral, gaining them a huge following. Wanting to take advantage of this opportunity for growth, they decided to take YouTube seriously. It would be sensible to double down on that and dedicate myself to sharpening my skills, learning to make more refined content and better thumbnails, and maximizing the click and view retention and rates, finding and finding new people to like and subscribe and... But a lie and many YouTubers can relate to, this line of thinking quickly led to burnout. So they decided to stop getting attached to the numbers and embrace the unknown. And while they fear this unpredictability, they have a desire to continue trying despite it. By now, you might already be starting to get a little what their main appeal is. They are not afraid to open up about their feelings, to be vulnerable. And they do this by talking about their problems, not with a victim mentality, but matter of factly. Which of course the AI voice helps a lot with. But it's not just the voice that helps with this. They have this way of incorporating humor in the script in such a way that it doesn't distract from the seriousness of the topic. The weight of that expectation was so bad and my fear of failure was so immense that I ended up in bed not able to do anything for almost a whole week. I guess you can say that I speed ran my YouTuber burnout arc in about 4 weeks. Yeah. I don't want to follow that path. I aspire to be that good. But let's delve deeper. They're not just a master of balancing tone, they're also really really good at telling stories and using metaphors to describe what their experience is like. Despite the monotone voice, they're somehow able to really capture your attention and engage you into the story. One of their videos is a one take clip of them fishing in VR. And all they share is the story of why they like hardware stores. This is something my left brain just can't wrap its head around. Boring scenes, mundane topic, flat voice? There's no way this is interesting. And yet, it's somehow able to grab my attention from beginning to end, even bringing tears to my eyes. I like how hardware stores are a bit more rugged than other stores. 
The floors are concrete, and it's okay if things get a little bit dinged up. Basically, it's okay to be a bit dinged up yourself, and you're not so beholden to rigid formality. Lastly, they're very in tune with their emotions. Despite being an overthinker and analyzer, they're aware enough to know that this more often than not leads to stress and misery. So even when their writing stops making sense, they allow themselves to fully own their feelings and express them anyway with confidence. What if it isn't? That's okay too. This video doesn't make any sense anymore. I don't make sense. How are you supposed to edit this? These scene notes hardly mean anything. It's, it's what, what I, I see in, in my head. head. The video has like for different endings at this point. I don't know how a Lillian ends. I don't know how a Lillian ends. Combine this unapologetic expression of their feelings with their ability to use metaphors and it leads to some very poetic scenes. I know I'm not the only person who feels like this. My co-workers are getting married and buying houses and having kids. Sometimes they talk about crying in the parking lot before coming into work. A lot of the most successful people I know take antidepressants. There is nothing wrong with taking antidepressants, but it is meaningful to me that the people who seem like they have everything figured out need them too. Aileen has me reconsider how I create content. Just like them, I tend to overthink. A lot. I tend to try to make sense of everything all the time. When I think of ways I could help people with my videos, my mind goes to things like giving advice, guidance and being there for them. It does not come natural to me to think that I could just talk about something I experienced without thought for any kind of satisfying conclusion and that would be all someone needed. But the thing is, it does make sense. People don't need solutions to their problems as much as they used to. With the internet, and now AI, at our fingertips, we can find a logical solution to our problems anytime. A lack of answers hasn't been an issue anymore in years. What we need right now more than ever is humanity, imperfection, acceptance that things don't always make sense, even when seemingly everyone around us is telling us otherwise. We need to stop pointing people to solutions and start trusting our feelings. I was feeling this overwhelming sense of relief at being in the bathroom with the door locked because it felt like the world couldn't reach me there. It felt like while I was in there with the door locked, I had suddenly been cut free from all the threads tying me to the busy world outside. Like the world was this racing river I was bobbing in, struggling to keep my head above water while barely having any time to worry about the obstacles and dangers I was being swept toward. And for a minute in the bathroom, I had been able to step out of the river. I was feeling tearful because I didn't want to leave that moment. I didn't want to leave the bathroom. I didn't want to step back into the river 